Welcome to the Elevate Everyday podcast. I'm on here with my trusty co-host, Coach Herb Tanton, and I've I've helped hundreds of people transform their lives um, through fitness. And Herb, I mean, probably you know closer to a thousand, multiple thousands at this point. He's been doing this for 38 years. I've been doing this for about a decade now. Um, so what we're going to be talking about on this one is the most common traits and characteristics of our most successful clients from over the years. So I'm going to dive right into my my number one. And my the number one for me is fully adopting the process, right? Like fully going all in on what it takes and, and kind of the program we're, we're laying out in front of them and not being like one toe in the water, like not being half-ass, not being half in, half out, right? Just going all in 100% and trusting that they're on the right program to get them where they want to go. So that's that's kind of my number one that I've noticed from my most successful clients is they just like go all in right away. Herb, what's what's your number one? Uh, the number one that I've gone through over the years is you have to be coachable. In other words, I don't care what your experience is, where you've been. If you're coming to myself or Kate for help, then you need to be a, the ability to adapt to whatever we're saying. So you have to be 100% no ego coach, whatever you say goes, right? So you have to be coachable because there's going to be times when you're doing a process where it's working out of the food and you're like, this doesn't make any sense. It's like, it doesn't need to make sense to you right now. Just do it, right? Yeah. So again, we always educate people while we're doing things, but the whole, if you have the ability to just be coachable, take down the ego, you're going to be so much better off. Yeah, it's the thing that pops into my head when you say be coachable is I, I found that a common thing that people want to do is they come into the the program and they want to like eat less than the meal plan we give them. They, they want to get there quicker than we're like setting the path in front of them. Um, and we, I can think of a couple examples of clients where, you know, we're strategically setting them up so that we can ramp their metabolism up in the beginning and give them enough fuel and recovery to like get all these habits in place. But they want to just like, they want to eat less. They want to get there quicker. Right. And I think that's part of that, like, you know, trusting the process and being coachable and, and realizing that there's like a method behind the madness of the strategy we're laying out in front of you. So that, yeah. that's one thing that popped in my head when you said that. Yeah. Um, but for sure, that's that's definitely one of them. No, I would say number two for me is like resilience. I, I kind of lumped these two together, resilience and adaptability. And, you know, because it, it never gets easy. You just find ways to make it happen. Uh, you have to adapt to whatever's going on. The, the example that pops right in my head, because it happened yesterday, um, we had a client text us and their their truck broke down, right? But they, they like were adaptable. They they figured it out um, and they still got their workout in. And it, I just, I can tell from the way this client, because he's, he's early on with us, I can tell the way he's getting after it. And he's like making these changes and making sure it's a priority. Like he's got that resilience and adaptability that's going to help him get to the the goals that he's striving for. So what, what are your thoughts on that? What's kind of maybe a number two for you, Herb? A hundred percent. You know, for me, I like it when, you know, if somebody's coachable and you set them in a direction, you have to take decisive action. 100% take action. You can't learn a language by reading a damn book. Get out there and start speaking it, make mistakes, let somebody correct you, go back, research, get back out there and do it. So again, ours is a little different as far as you don't want to hurt yourself in your movement, but do it. Yeah. Right? But coach, I can only lift 10 pounds. Good for you. Do 10 pounds, right? And then next week do 12 and then 15. But you have to take decisive action. A lot of people get started and then they start tiptoeing. It's like, sweetie, you jumped off the cliff already. Better start flapping your wings, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so taking decisive action is very important. Then I know you're doing what I said you, you need to do because you're coachable. Yeah. So when you see these traits happen, you know the next one's in line. You know, like you said, all in 100%. That's kind of goes hand in hand with every single one. Because if you're not in 100%, what are you doing? Life's too short to be half-assed. We hear that all the time. Yeah. And it's 100% true and it's nutrition and fitness. You can get in the best shape of your life for the remainder of your life. Just got to put a little effort into it. Be coachable. Yeah. Like you said, be all in. Just do it. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. The, the, the taking action thing and taking decisive action, what, what pops up in my head, I saw a quote the other day or just like a, a tweet or something. And it was, it was talking about how like the smartest client, like the most intelligent client sometimes 
um, can be the toughest clients because they just overthink everything and they don't take mm -hmm. action. It's like, they just want to think everything through, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, sometimes you just gotta, you gotta turn your brain off <laughs> and just, and just take those actions. Like sometimes, you know, you can overthink going to the gym. You can overthink like, is this the right meal plan? You could just think yourself in circles. Right. Sometimes you just got to shut that off and just like trust the process and go. So for sure. That's what popped in my head. But my, yeah. my number three is having a curious mind, right? So it's kind of, <laughs> I guess like a little bit of a caveat to that, but it's just wanting to learn and asking your coach questions, right? Like being curious, um, wanting to know why, like you said earlier, like we try to educate on why we're doing certain things. And it, it always helps if the, the client is asking the questions and wants to know, you know, what, why, why am I doing this? Why am I not doing that type of thing? Um, so, so that's kind of my number three. What are your thoughts on that, Herb? I agree a hundred percent. You know, my number three is, and again, for lack of a better definition, um, faith, faith and belief that you can do this with help from my, myself and Kate and other people, you can do this, right? And Kate and I, we preach this all the time, control the things you can control and don't worry about the things you can't control. So worrying about the things you can control, get into the gym, get your food pan, prep your food, give yourself time, schedule time for yourself. When someone tells me they can't make it to the gym, they didn't make it today because they had to do work. It's like, you should put yourself on the schedule. When it pops up that it's your time, you're done. It's your time, yeah. right? Nobody's going to do it for you. So you got to have the faith that you took the right steps. You're coachable, right? You're taking decisive action. You got to have faith it's going to work because if you don't, and it's not going to work, right? Yeah. So again, you have to you have to conceive the idea, believe the idea, and you can achieve the idea. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. What what pops in my head with the faith aspect of things is it's like you don't go in the gym and then you come out and, and you're like, oh, I'm you know. I'm, I'm pounds lighter and I look different. It's like, you have to have faith and like, it takes a little bit of time. Right. But it, you know, you, you stick to the process a month, two months in, you really do start seeing that progress. So you do really have to kind of believe it before you see it. All right. It's people always say, I want to see it before I believe it, but you, you kind of have to believe it before you see it with this type of process. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and, and I think number one for both of us overall blanket and we've talked about this is when people take this step, you have to raise your standards. You can't be that guy that cheated and went out and drank every night and stuff like that. You know, it's kind of like if, if you go to AA, which I've had numerous people go to AA, right? Come back with your coin and be like, I'm good, Herb. I'm going to go back to work as a bartender. Mm. It's like, no, you have to change your environment that led to you being in this position in the first place. Right. So you have to change. Some people have to change their entire lifestyle. Yeah. But in order to do that, you raise your standards. Why? Why are you doing this? It's not you're better than anybody else. You care more about yourself than the people care about themselves. So I have to raise my standards, have pride in what I'm doing, you know, be coachable, give it 100 percent and have faith. It's yeah. a it's a process. But, yeah, I think raising standards is huge. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And that that kind of goes along um, with my number four. And it's going to be like competitiveness with yourself, right? Because that's, that's kind of, I feel like that goes hand in hand with raising your standards, but it's just, you know, falling in love with the, the, the process and the progress over the outcomes that you're trying to get to, right? Like, don't just be so fixated on like, I have to lose 40 pounds and like nothing else matters. Like I just got to get there, right? It's, it's falling in love with that competitiveness of you just getting that little bit better um, finding those ways to improve day in, day out. Yeah. So, so that's, that's kind of my number four. So what, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, hundred percent. You know, again, people, they have to realize there's time involved, right. And they have to trust the process and they have to give it a hundred percent. If they're doing that, it's all going to be good. But I tell you what, I find that a lot of people think when they lose the weight, they'll like themselves better. It's like I've, I've trained many people in great shape and they don't like themselves. So it's not going to help. If you don't like yourself now, you're not going to like yourself smaller. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> so you have to remember this is a process while you're doing it. Right. And you and I lead the, the example that this is all about health and longevity. You know, and when I get to my age, you know, I'm like, OK, I want to keep doing this. I want to train in the gym every morning until, you know, the day that it's not time anymore, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but you have to give it the effort every day. Right. And you have to be like you said, you have to be present in the moment. Forget the past. 
does not equal the future. Forget about the future. It could change. Be present today. Yeah. Right? Just worry about your nutrition and your workout today. What we'll do tomorrow, tomorrow? Right. So again, it's it, it's it's a process. And I think it, again, we don't want to overwhelm people by giving them the whole process, but it's you you start to find out more about yourself when you go through this journey. Mm -hmm. And it's all mindset. Yeah. Right. And the physical stuff takes care of itself, but how you're dealing with it. That's the mindset. Yeah. Yeah. And I think what's what's helped me um, and what I find a lot of our successful clients kind of start to adopt this mindset is, you know, when, when you are kind of competing with yourself and, and kind of like embracing the the challenge and honestly, like embracing the suffering. <laughs> it's I, I think the most successful people in whatever area it is, it's like it's not what are you willing to um you know what 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 do you want to like accomplish like it's not about like thinking about what do you want to to be ha like i don't want to be happy it's like what are you actually willing to to suffer through to, to get where you want to go mm -hmm. right and it and it's when when we talk about competing with yourself and challenging yourself um you know i think it's a misconception that being happy um and being like fulfilled is just like being relaxed, sitting on a beach, sipping Mai Tais and stuff like that. But I find that people are most happy. And I read a book called Flow. Um, and it's people are most happy when they're in flow state. And to get into that state, you actually have to be challenging yourself, like just at the edge of your current abilities, right? So you, you can't be in that comfort zone and just always be comfortable. That's actually not what's going to be most fulfilling for you. It's actually, you know, when you're challenging yourself, when you're on the edge of your ability, what you can currently do, and you're, you're pushing past that, that's when you're going to feel most happy and fulfilled. That's what I've found. So, yeah. And, and like you said about the comfort zone, when you're looking to lose weight, you can't do it. You've tried everything, which means you've been inside your comfort zone and there's no answer. You have to get outside your comfort zone and do something that's just like totally <clears throat> new, totally, maybe a little scary. You know, but you have to be invested, you know, and again, we challenge our clients all the time. What I love to do, instead of me saying, okay, there's your challenge for the next 30 days. This is what I want you to accomplish. You're like, okay, coach, I'll get it. I love to ask a client, what do you want to put down for your challenge? Mm -hmm. Then you see their eyes bug out like, oh shit, because whatever I say, I'm telling you I can do coach. Yeah. So now you got to pick your words wisely. All right. This is your challenge, your program. What do you think you can accomplish? Right. And we'll guide you through it. But it's great when you hit that goal and you say, coach, I told you I could do it and I did it. It's like, OK, what's your challenge for next month? Right. You know, and again, I don't know where this fits in here, Cade. And I think you're big with all your clients on this too. journal, guys. Write shit down. There's so many things that go through your mind every day. And there's so many things at the end of the day. You're like, well, what was I thinking about that? Carry a journal, write it down. You guys got your freaking cell phones in your hands. Text them, you know, send yourself voice messages. Literally. I my training partner used to do that. He'd send himself voice messages on everything. Pick up some of their, instead of texting it, right? So whatever works for you, but when you start changing your life, it changes your life. Yeah. Every aspect, right? How you feel about yourself, how you feel about others, you know? But once you start taking care of yourself, you're going to be better for other people. Right. And Cade said this many times, you can't you, you can't pour from an empty container. There's got to be something in there for you to give because you can't give if you don't have. Yeah, for sure. And I, I just wanted to show and I I journal every day. I've got two journals right now. This is my my morning one. Right. It's it's called two minute mornings um, and it it's gratefulness. It's what do you want to let go of every day? That's one thing that's in in the prompt here. And then it's three things you want to focus on. And then I've just got a simple one line a day that I do in the evenings. And it's just reflecting on your day, just kind of like one sentence of, of what's kind of like, what did you learn this day type of thing? So I'm, I'm huge on it. I think, you know, one, one thing I was talking about in one of our quick check-ins recently with our clients was just when you start to see yourself journal some of the same things, <laughs> you kind of get sick of yourself and you're like, Hey, like, why am I, why am I doing this all the time? Like I'm writing this down every day like i need to change this but sometimes when we just leave it in our heads we don't realize that so i think there's something so powerful about getting it down on paper uh, yeah it makes such a huge difference so because people can see that you know i get you said i'm going to hit legs today i come walking out of the gym my legs aren't going to grow you know second workout legs aren't going to grow third fourth okay now we're starting to tickle them a little bit but it's a compounded thing 
right? Over and over and over and over and over again. And every, you know, this is, a, I, can't, I can't remember the exact numbers, but you know this corny thing. Would you rather have, a, I'll give you a million dollars or you can have a penny a day that doubles every day. Right. So that penny every day, 15 days, half a month later, you got 160 bucks. 30 days later, you got 5 million because you've done so much and it's compounded, right? Same thing. Every time you do the, that's why I don't like to see people walk away. I'll be back in a month. Even if you are, you've lost your momentum, you lost your leverage. Um, you've got to find a way to keep going. Once you start going, you've got to remember it's compounded, right? Yeah. It's momentum. Yeah. What do they say in pro football? They're always like, oh, good team, bad team. Who's got the best record? But when it comes to the playoffs, who has the momentum? That's the yeah. team you put your money on. Yeah. Right? You give me somebody and I got, we got tons of clients like this. I've had hundreds of clients like this. They're not the most athletic. They're not the most gifted. They're not the most um, person that's going to get it all done, but they don't give up. Yeah. And they compound every day and they win. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Yeah. So you gotta, you gotta be willing to, you know, put the ego down and just ah, be decisive and they like, coach me. Yeah. The, mo the momentum thing is huge because the analogy that I used to always say is like, um, like comparing it to a car, it's like the car is working the hardest, the engine's working the hardest when it's accelerating, right? So like getting up to that speed is the toughest part of it. Mm -hmm. Like once, once you get up to that speed, you can hit cruise control and you're just cruising. Like the engine's just, you know, just going along. So I, I find that it's kind of the same thing with your fitness. Like if you get these habits in place, like doing it is the hard part, like getting into that momentum and getting the habits in place. That's the toughest part. Once you kind of get in the swing of things and it's rolling, like right. just don't let it stop. Right. And so like this weekend I'm, I'm going on a little trip, right. I already know that there's a gym nearby. Like I'm going to get my workout in. Cause I know if I go three, four days without working out, like it's so much harder to get back in the swing. Right. So, and I think we find that I would say for me, like our most successful clients, you know, I'm sure you can attest to this too, Herb. It's like they just find a way on vacations, trips, traveling for work that like they're planning ahead. They're making sure that they're keeping this stuff in place and they're not just like taking full one, two weeks off, you know, here and there because because then they're just always having to start over. So, well, I mean, if you know, if I'm constantly having to tell somebody what to do and help them through it and walk them through it constantly, I'm doing it for them. You take steps like you're doing, hey, find a gym. You're owning your program. You're owning your fitness. You're owning your responses. You're not just blowing in the wind. You're like, I'm controlling this, right? Again, like I said, there's so much mindset work in this. Just getting in the gym is, I mean, the hardest thing. Once you get there, you lift, you work out, you go home, yep. right? So can you get there? Can you make that process? And we've got clients that are like, well, what if I just worked out at home? Right. Well, you're going to get more. And we got people that have worked out at home. They graduate to a gym. And the first thing they say is that's the greatest thing I ever did. Right. Again, it's stepping outside the comfort zone, building the mindset. And, and you can do anything. I mean, any everything we're talking about applies to anything else in life. We're just talking about fitness and nutrition right now. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's something I wanted to bring up. And we'll, we'll wrap it up here in a sec. But but I, I one thing I've noticed is a lot of our really successful clients they were successful in something else and they've just been really focused on that. Um, and so this just wasn't part of their life really, but once they, they already have the mindset, right. They already have something that they know they've been successful in They They already kind of have those tools. And so then they're just able to, to transfer it over to their the fitness part of their life. And it's just game over. Yeah. So yeah. 100%. Yeah. But well, guys, um, hope that was helpful for you. Hope some of this resonated with you. Um, let us know if you got any questions, let us know topic ideas you guys want to know more about. Um, other than that, fitness junkies to the damn moon. We love you guys. If you're, if you're listening to this, you know, and, and, and you're one of our really successful clients, I'm sure it just sounds like we're, we're describing you. <laughs> so, but, um, if you're not part of the team guys, elevate every damn day and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Peace. Elevate. Only obligation is to tell it straight.